five, there will be a meeting of the youth 2022 summer mission trip in the fellowship hall. For those interested in doing that. Uh, confirmation session will start on November 21st. Uh, so that's coming up. The uh, children and youth family ministry team will meet November 16th at 6.30 here. Uh, and there will be an Advent candle distribution for all ages from 0 to 100, it says. So even if you're 101, you can still participate. But uh, that will start on November 21st. All God's people. All um, God's people, as a, as a shout. Also, in your goal today, you'll notice that uh, the help of the Soto family on Thanksgiving Day, there's a, a list of a meal uh, of things we can donate for uh, uh, Thanksgiving meal. You can see that in there. Uh, and on uh, Saturday coming up, we have the Methodist Madness uh, this coming Saturday. Is that? Yeah. Right. Thank you, Charles. Well, friends, good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. It is a blessing to see all of you here. And I want to say a special welcome to anyone joining us on Facebook Live. And extend a special welcome to any visiting guests, whether here in the sanctuary or joining us online. My name is Reverend Jeff Prothero and I serve as pastor at the Soto United Methodist Church. And it is a blessing to be able to offer worship in a variety of ways, knowing that wherever you are in this moment, you are in sacred space and you will experience the movement of the spirit in your lives and in your hearts as we join in this time of worship together. Well, this morning we continue our sermon series on celebrate, and we're going to celebrate restoration. The prophet Jeremiah had much to say to the people of Israel as they experienced a tumultuous exile and began to wonder how to find hope in the midst of displacement and began to wonder where is God in the midst of restoration. And I think it's a very pertinent message for us today to share in this idea of what it means to be exiled, but also to be restored through the power and grace of God's love. And so I look forward to sharing this message with all of you, with everyone gathered here, and all of you in your sacred spaces as well. Well, friends, now is the time for worship. You are all invited to stand as you are able, as we share in the call to worship as printed in the bulletin led by Charles. God is waiting for us to welcome us in Christ, to show you the path of life, to love us in the power of the Spirit, to be present with us always. Come, let us worship the Lord. And now we will start our opening hymn. Now, thank we all, God, number 102 in your hymn.
please be seated. It is a blessing to be with you on this morning as we prepare our hearts to be in prayer with God. This is a community that is ready to share in one another's joys and concerns together, recognizing that when we give ourselves over to God fully, we experience the true grace of Christ's love in our hearts together. And it is in community that we offer these prayers for one another. And wherever you are in this moment, if you are at home, you're invited to lift up in prayer those joys and concerns, knowing that God receives all that we have to give. And in the midst of community, as we share together the joy of prayer, we recognize that God's grace continues to work in our lives and in our hearts. Now this morning in our community, we want to be in prayer for Dean Chavez during his time of recovery. Prayer for Mary Cox during her time of recovery following a placement, a replacement of a pacemaker. Continued prayers for Linda Patton as she recovers from surgery from a couple of weeks ago. Prayers for the family of Lynn Sofko. Yesterday we had her celebration of life and we lifted up Lynn and recognized that she is experiencing eternal rest with God, free from the burdens of what um, her illnesses had done to her. But her spirit was always strong in the midst of that, and it was a beautiful recollection and remembrance of who Lynn was and will continue to be for the family and community. And also continued prayers for Larry Stephan as he begins his uh, rehab assignment at Healthcare Resort in Olathe. And I just want to extend just the opportunity for all of you to lift all these names up in your own personal prayer lives. And any names that you have in your hearts, please give over to God, knowing that God receives that Christ's love surrounds and the Spirit's healing grace continues to guide us on our way during this time of prayer. Well, friends, let us continue in our prayer lives as Charles leads us in the prayer of the people as printed in the bulletin. And together we pray. Great God, we give thanks for this day, for the breath of life in our bodies, and for the ability to gather here as your faithful followers. During this time, may our prayers honor us and heartfelt. May we support and encourage one another. May our words be kind and compassionate, and we will experience full restoration in Christ's love. Amen. experience the fullness of your healing grace. We know that through Christ, your love will continue to surround each and every one of them. We recognize in other spaces, it's a time of celebration, a time of lifting up the graciousness of your love. And we just offer a word of praise and thanksgiving for all that you can continue to give each and every one of us. This morning, we think about restoration. We recognize that in the stages of life, on the journey together, there are times where we feel like we're walking a path of exile, that we feel removed from you, that the community can at times feel disjointed, 
and we lift up our hands in wonderment, seeking your guiding, hoping that you are with us. Help us to see clearly that you continue to be with us all of our days, that you are there in our moments of joy, you carry us in our moments of sorrow, that in the midst of the community, we can experience the fullness of the promise of restoration, a restoration made known to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in response, friends, you're invited to turn to number 389 in your hymnal, and we will sing the first verse, Freely, Freely. this children moment and we will hear the scripture read. Good morning friends. It's good to be worshiping with you this morning. It's good to see some more friends, some more um, children in worship with us. And you with us at home in your sacred space as well. This morning, our scripture is from the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a book of the Bible that is named after someone named Jeremiah. And he was a prophet. He was a prophet. Do you guys remember what prophets did or what they continue to do today? Anybody remember? So they, they shared the messages of God with the people, right? They shared messages with God. And this prophet, he looked around and he saw that the people were not, they were not obeying God. And he had some messages for the people that were kind of difficult. They probably didn't always want to hear what Jeremiah had to say. Um, and so, sadly, they didn't listen to Jeremiah. And the people had to leave their homeland. They lost the homeland that God had given them. And so now they were far away from home, but they were never far away from God. They were never far away from God. And as you read Jeremiah, Jeremiah brings them new news. And so we get to hear some of this new and good news this morning that Jeremiah shared with the people. Let's listen as Mr. Miller reads to us our scripture today to hear what it was. Today our scriptures from Jeremiah 29 verses 10 through 14. The Lord proclaims, when Babylon's 70 years are up, I will come and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. 
They are plans for peace, not disaster. To give you future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, you will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have scattered you, and I will bring you home after your long exile, declares the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So I have with me this morning the Bible that we hand our upper elementary students, and there's an article in the Bible that goes with today's scripture, and I want to read part of it to you. So the people of God, they have made some mistakes, and they were facing hard consequences. But even when they messed up, God never stopped loving them. God knew this was a sad time for them, but God told them not to lose hope. And God said that God had good plans for them. God was never far away. And God promised then, just as God promises now, to listen to anyone who calls on God. And so this is one of the most hopeful scriptures, and I enjoy it so much. And I hope that you will read it and that you will explore it. Bible explorers who are exploring the article, there's a little bit more to it in your Bible. Um, and look at this story at home with your family. Um, so we are never far away from God. God is never far away from us. And anyone who calls on God, God will hear us. So let us call on God in prayer this morning. Will you pray an echo prayer with me? I will say a line, and I invite you to repeat it after me. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for always being with me. And thank you for always hearing my prayers. Amen. And Children's Church for preschoolers who second grade is going to happen now. If you'd like to join me. Thank you, friends. Let us continue this time of worship as we experience the ministry of music. Shelley will play for us Sweet, Sweet Spirit.
Thank you, Shelley. Friends, will you pray with me and for me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be a faithful response to the Spirit moving among us in all of our sacred spaces. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Well, March of 1988 will always be a touchstone in my own life, because a couple of wonderful things happened that month. First, um, some of you will think back, who are Jayhawks fans, that is when KU won the uh, NCAA tournament featuring Danny and the Miracles, and it was a good time. But I gotta say, the other seminal moment in my own life was I got to watch most of that from a hospital bed. Because that was the year that I had a very necessary back surgery, which kind of put me out of commission for several weeks. Now, the decision was made within our household to go ahead and move forward with the surgery even during the school year. And what that meant was I was going to have to be out of school for half a semester, or a full nine weeks quarter, and a, sub, um, a special uh, tutor would have to come in and so I could keep up with my schoolwork and things of that nature. But most of that time really was spent in a kind of state of gradual mobility, moving from, boy, well, we could barely walk to the front door, to eventually being able to go up and down the street. And so my movement, freedom of movement, was very limited. I really weren't around um, any of my friends. I was at home. <laughs> Again, it's probably a good thing this was 1988 and not 2021. Um, you know, there wasn't any internet or anything like that back then. Uh, but there was cable TV, though my parents severely limited my access to cable TV during the day. And so I had to spend a lot of time kind of with gathering with my own thoughts, so to speak, working on schoolwork, but not quite having access to kids, to my friends, and things of that nature during this time of recovery. And so over the course of this nine weeks that I was at home, I kind of gradually moved from you know, being upbeat, you know, KU had just won the national tournament, uh, to being pretty crappy. To being one who, you know, kind of had that short fuse. Um, one, you know, none of you have probably ever experienced this. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes mom or dad would just walk in and you'd be like, ah! Or even worse, my brothers would kind of pass for me and they knew that I really couldn't do anything about it because I didn't have that spring in my step anymore and things like that. And so it was a time of what I would say of exile for myself in which I had to recover, um, I had to heal, and though I also had to learn what it meant to be removed from the people and the places that I love, to kind of sit in your own thoughts, you know, I was a seventh grader at the time, and to really begin to understand, I would say that was my first feeling of what it meant, I think at times, to be an adult. You know, you have kind of these adult thoughts, and you think about, wow, gosh, loneliness is real, and separateness is real, and what does it mean? How do I kind of regain a sense of who I am? When can I rejoin the community? When can I be regathered with the people I care about? How can I remove kind of some of the negative energy that I was experiencing the further I got into this uh, time of separation? And so I think all of us who have experienced, and then throughout the course of our own lives, we do experience these moments of separation, of what it means to be exiled, so to speak. Sometimes it's out of our control. Um, other times it's well within our control. I would say these past, oh, 18, 19, 20 months, all of us have had significant experiences of what it means to be exiled. 
COVID-19 has kind of changed the way we think about things, how we experience the world. It has changed how we do church. And I know there's certainly been agreement and disagreement with the best way to do church in the midst of this time of exile. But this isn't the first time. For me, it wasn't the first time anyone had ever experienced anything like this. For all of us gathered here, we are inheritors of a tradition of a people who went through a very tumultuous and um, chaotic time of exile. And it's right there within our scripture. And the question for us becomes, just like it was for me in 1988, and perhaps for all of us gathered here now, is where do we find hope in the midst of those times of exile? How do we experience restoration? What does that look like? And are we willing to risk that through this transformation, things will be different? And there is going to be kind of a new way of going through the world. Some of the activities that I loved, I can no longer do. And so I had to figure something else to do. You know, I couldn't play football or anything like that. So I ran. <laughs> I ran away from my brothers and just kept on running. Um, but that was something new. Something I had to come to a better understanding about myself and the world around me. That, yes, things are different now as we get to the other side of exile. And here today, we have the prophet Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, I think, is probably one of the most fascinating people, not just in the Bible, but just that we've ever encountered. He's one who's both full of hope, but also full of kind of resentment and anger. One who can see a clear vision of the future, but also one who is willing to step in and say, this is the reality now. And unless you're willing to see the truth and beauty of the future, you're going to be stuck in this reality. There's a healthy tension with Jeremiah as he's trying to guide the people towards exile and out of exile. <laughs> One of remembering God's love and God's hope for the future, but also recognizing the present situation for what it is. And for the people of Israel, it was not good. And so much of the Old Testament details the people of Israel's response to dealing with what it means to live into exile, to have a life situation occur that was truly uh, calamitous, and forced a reckoning and showed that, you know what? Boy, this isn't the way it was supposed to be. Perhaps we've led ourselves into this. What is the other side going to look like? They were a people experiencing great calamities that called into question their own reliance on God, who promised both deliverance and stability. They worshipped one who said, I will deliver you yet we're experiencing great calamities. Now, the details of exile are complex and sometimes outside of our own cultural understandings. The feelings and emotions experienced, though, are very real and raw. It was traumatic. What they had known was no longer reality. Many people were ripped away from their homeland and taken far away to try and survive in a completely different setting. You know, basically what would happen is this conquering group would come in and they would take the leadership of the group conquered and say, no, 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 you get to live over here now, far away from where you once were. Rootedness was torn up. Stability was not the norm. You know, Jeremiah saw this coming. He said, hey, you understand what's going to happen? You all have turned your hearts away from God, and the outside world is going to come in and take you away to someplace else. Are you ready to deal with that? He was ready to deal with that. Nobody. Of course not. But even in the midst of all of that, even as it was happening, even as Jeremiah's world was falling apart, there was still a sense that hope 
was with them, and that God's love was not going to cease. That despite the fact that, you know what, the people of Israel, perhaps, you know, you didn't always follow the right path that you needed to follow, God won't ultimately abandon you. And so in the midst of exile, in the midst of great calamity, Jeremiah writes a letter to the people saying that God will come and fulfill God's gracious promise to bring you back to the place, to the promised land. And here we have these wonderful words of God saying, you know, I know the plans I have for you and restoration will occur. The question becomes, are we ready to receive that message in the midst of great calamity? Who are you, God, to say that? Because look at our present situation. Look at what has happened to us. Look at where we are in this moment. God says, you know what? You will continue searching for me. But I am there with and for each and every one of you. We do not need to be held captive to the exiles of our own makings, but rather look to the promise of what true restoration in Christ means for all of us. To see that again it is not our sins or mistakes that will ultimately define us, but rather how we can live into the promise of the grace given to us freely. I'd say right now on a world scale, we're living in an exile beyond our control, beyond our understanding. We have been forced over these past several months to make decisions that perhaps down the road we'll later regret, or we're continually looking like here at the church is like, what do we do? How do we be church? What does it mean to be the church that is seeking full restoration again? But first you have to recognize that, you know what, things aren't going to be the way they were back then, but if we fully believe in God's love and God's promise of hope for each and every one of us, Perhaps something more amazing can happen over on the other side. But we've got to be willing to step into that belief and recognition and understanding. That restoration is something to live into and hope for. That's what Jeremiah was challenging the people of Israel to do. And it was a hard challenge. I'll say, you know, March of 2020, April... When we did that first Easter that um, was fully online and my communications were you were all virtual and we were talking with one another by phone via Zoom and all that stuff. It's interesting. There was a community cohesion within that because we all thirsted for this return to normalcy. We kept thinking that, oh, it's just going to happen around the bend. It's right there. What we didn't take into account for ourselves, I think, is the emerging reality that this may take a lot longer than we realize, and maybe we do need to look at new ways of engaging in ministry together and saying that, you know what, fracturing may occur, but how do we make sure that the pieces stay within you know, that safe distance for us to regather together? And maybe it's okay when we do put those pieces back together, it's not the usual stained glass, but it's something new. And then things just kept dragging on. You know, I, I don't want to go over all the details of 2020. There was an election. There was a furthering of a divide. There was a lot going on in our own culture. We were told that you're either over here or over there. Again, because I think we didn't know how to deal with the separation and exile. And so we create within our own minds, we try to fit a reality that doesn't necessarily reflect the wider reality. And so a divide further. We weren't getting things done the way we wanted to. And so we were creating more and more division. Yet here again, we have the words of Jeremiah saying, you know what, can we look past all of that, please, and look towards God who can heal the wounds and who can make things new? God calls us to be released from the exiles of our own making as well as promises to remain steadfast 
during times when the world around us forces us to stay apart. You know, I think of my own children and many of your children who've had to live through all of this, who've had to witness adults behave in ways that perhaps we weren't presenting our best selves to the world, yet still they're called to endure and they're called to adjust and they're called to be the ones that we place a certain type of hope onto. Yet we know that unless we're willing to name within ourselves those things that continue to divide us, those things that trouble us, then full healing can't occur. Full restoration may be within our reach, but perhaps beyond our grasp. Jeremiah says, you know what, this may take a while, folks. But if you can lean in and learn to embrace God's promise of restoration, knowing that things are going to look different, but God's grace will still remain, then your children and your children's children will be able to embrace the fullness of what renewal is like. We can celebrate this promise of restoration, of hope fulfilled, grace being known in the midst of community. It is strengthened within the bonds of community as we think of new ways to engage in ministry together. You truly form the bonds of hope. You gather here, you listening, those who are scattered throughout our community, they are all part of the bonds of hope of who we are, and they carry the shared joy of what true restoration will look like. Because each and every one of us, while we've experienced a type of exile together, still hold fast to the belief that Jeremiah had the spark of the divine within us that can continue to be engaged in authentic and true ministry together, despite all that we have experienced these past several weeks and months. Hopefully we could say, won't say years, but um, I also recognize that the present reality sometimes doesn't always give us that type of hope. Because the hope we want to lean into, the world cannot give, only God can provide. It can open up the space up for us to fully recognize that we can be restored in God's love. We can shed, you know, kind of the dead weight of the sins we carry, of the divisions we've created, of the realities we're trying to form but live into the true reality of Christ's love for all of us. That is why we celebrate restoration, because that love is always coming. That love is always there. And we are a people, if we're ready to admit that, you know what, we have experienced exile, but that's not what's going to define us. It's when we live into the promise of that restoration, and embrace the truth of Christ's love and ready to ride the waves of the Holy Spirit, knowing that perhaps we're not fully certain of what the picture is going to look like, but we trust that the love will remain. The love will remain steadfast and that we will celebrate this gift of restoration because all of us have been given the gift to be engaged in the faithful ministry of the Soto United Methodist Church. It is together that we will grow. It is together that we will share that love. It is together that we will demonstrate the fullness of that restoration. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we are blessed by these words of Jeremiah that as a prophet, there are times when he was harsh, when he named a reality that people didn't want to hear, but within all of that was the truth and recognition of God's presence always being within our reach, that God's love never ceases, that truly there is a plan of restoration as we authentically engage in the mission and ministry of the church together. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I'll see you. <clears throat>
Many of you, uh, probably over the last couple of days, or if not, we will over the next few days, be receiving a letter from the church. Uh, it's November, and it's our annual yearly go. Let's uh, give information on how we run the church uh, for the next year. Uh, and in that comes an estimate of giving card. And this card kind of does two things. One, uh, especially for our family, again, I'm married to an engineer, so planning and organizing and getting things together and making sure we have a list uh, is how we run our lives. Uh, uh, so, and I manage people for 35 years, so that kind of planning works well for me too. Uh, but by filling out and, and kind of giving, deciding what I'm going to give and what our family is going to give to the church for the next year, that kind of fits in that plan. So we can kind of decide how we're going to allocate our resources for the next year, and this gives us a good way to do that. Uh, and on the 21st, we'll actually be turning these in, and, and we use this then in the second phase is also as the church planner. As our church committees try and figure out how we're going to better, better utilize our, our funds for the next year so that we can actually be able to share this word with the community uh, outside of just ourselves. So we really need and use these cards uh, to help us in that planning, just as we really use this in our house to help us know what we're going to do and how what our share is going to be out of our uh, income. So again, please take these, uh, read these information. It's a good, a good letter from Jeff on the church and our faith and how this can help in that uh, function. So with that, now let's have our offering. Thank you. stand for the doxology.
friends, may experience, may you experience the movement of God's grace in your lives and your hearts. May this week be one of encountering God's love. May you experience the fullness of restoration as you share in that love with everyone you meet. Go now in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.